Uh, thank you everybody for uh, joining this call. Uh, this is uh, uh, the first time uh, in Tickmill's history that we are going to present uh, our financial results in this format. Uh, overall, if, uh, if you look at uh, 2018, we as a business did not really focus on, uh, on building our business uh, and, uh, and expanding, but uh, we focused in all of the departments uh, to be compliant, to be ready uh, uh, when the new uh, regulations and restrictions kicked in and, uh, and to be at all times uh, compliant uh, with the regulations. And, uh, and nonetheless, uh, we were able to achieve uh, record financial results. As you can see here, uh, our net profit for last year was uh, uh, a bit less than uh, 20 million uh, US dollars uh, and uh, it was actually a 33% uh, increase uh, compared to the uh, previous year. Uh, the profitability uh, overall uh, resulted also in us uh, being able to grow uh, uh, the net capital base of the company uh, and the higher the capital base of the company, of course, it means that the safer the company is for the clients, for the traders, for the counterparties. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the uh, growing uh, or, or the growth of the markets where, where we see most of the growth uh, last year, it was actually surprisingly Europe. Uh, and I would say that the primary reason for that uh, was that uh, whenever new regulations kick in, when there are uncertainties on the market, then uh, traders, clients generally tend to look uh, for safety. And, uh, and since Tickmill has been around uh, for some years, uh, uh, with the uh, brand and reputation we have, uh, we were uh, successfully able to uh, gather more clients and in fact uh, increase uh, our market share overall uh, in Europe but, uh, but also elsewhere like uh, uh, the GCC countries, uh, South America and, and elsewhere. Uh, so the financial results we are, uh, we are going to present today are uh, our consolidated uh, results uh, based on the audited reports of, uh, of three of our uh, regulated entities. Uh, they all bear uh, the uh, Dickmill name. In terms of the, uh, uh, some of the figures now, so uh, uh, our notional uh, net trading uh, volume, uh, which is the, the, uh, the notional value of, uh, of the trades that our client make, uh, was going up 84% last, uh, last year, uh, which actually increased uh, or exceeded our uh, expectations uh, quite a bit and, uh, and was surprising in that sense that uh, the, uh, uh, the second half of uh, 2018 uh, we saw uh, somewhat lower volatility which, uh, which would have meant that uh, the volumes uh, should have dropped uh, and they in fact dropped for a lot of the uh, industry counterparties. Uh, but in our case uh, the volumes actually increased uh, which was uh, partially related to us being able to gather uh, more market share. So uh, in terms of uh, uh, now going forward uh, to the best months that we had uh, uh, last year. So, uh, uh, October uh, we did the uh, record volume uh, and uh, reaching 145 billion uh, of trading volume and uh, which was then uh, going a bit slightly lower uh, because of the uh, decrease in the volatility but still uh, we have now reached to the level where on average uh, we are uh, generating uh, more than 100 billion of, uh, of monthly, uh, monthly trading volume and uh, we think that uh, pretty soon we should reach the level of 150 on a monthly basis and, and possibly within the next uh, 12 to uh, 18 months also reach the 200 uh, billion monthly trading volume level. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the net profit, so uh, uh, we, uh, we reached uh, almost uh, 20 million uh, US dollar of net uh, profit uh, last year 
uh, which uh, wasn't actually a bad result uh, considering that uh, uh, that a lot of work and efforts uh, were not actually uh, uh, did not go into building our business uh, in 2018 but rather being uh, compliant uh, with, uh, with all the regulations. Uh, profitability uh, of Tickmill for the end client uh, means that uh, the company is stable, uh, the company has uh, appropriate funding and capital in place, uh, which means that the clients can feel comfortable uh, placing their funds uh, with our company. In terms of the uh, net trading revenue, so this is the, the revenue of the company that it generates uh, from commissions uh, and other sources of income, uh, we, uh, we saw a slightly less uh, aggressive growth last year. Uh, the primary reason was that uh, we focused a lot uh, last year in our competitive uh, positioning. So uh, for some of the services, we lowered uh, the fees uh, we uh, improved with some of the pairs also the, uh, the spreads that we have and that uh, in turn enabled us on a positive side to, to gain more market share but, uh, but slightly negative side our, our revenue growth was not uh, that, uh, that big that uh, we could have been expected. And, uh, and just, just a small peek into the uh, situation we have this year, so uh, a lot of the inter industry participants have come out with, uh, with reports that they are seeing, seeing declining uh, uh, revenues, uh, dec declining financial metrics. Uh, we have actually seen this year uh, kicking off pretty nicely, so we are uh, up 8.8% uh, in terms of the net trading revenue compared uh, now to the previous, uh, previous year. Uh, trades executed is also uh, one of the metrics uh, we follow. So this is the number of uh, trades per side that our clients uh, placed uh, during last year. And it's uh, 83 uh, million. It was a uh, growth of 96% uh, compared to the previous uh, year. The uh, owner's equity of, uh, of Tickmill uh, uh, rose 45% last year. A number of new clients that we, uh, we signed up last year, so it's 45,000. Uh, uh, the new clients, uh, uh, the, uh, the source of these new clients geographically, it's uh, distributed quite evenly. So we are not seeing any region having uh, a a uh, overly huge uh, impact in terms of the new clients, uh, and uh, which is actually a good good thing. So, uh, so last year a lot of the brokers uh, who had difficulties uh, had these difficulties because they were only focused on Europe. Uh, we, on the other side, on the financial side, on the business side, we didn't have any difficulties because our uh, client base. Uh, uh, is uh, very well diversified uh, across the globe. So, we uh, so some projections as well. Uh, so uh, uh, this year we project uh, to reach a trading volume uh, of uh, 1.4 1, 1 to 1.5 trillion dollars. Uh, we feel very comfortable with this uh, projection and uh, which, uh, if reached, uh, will result in uh, strong profitability revenue numbers uh, and all the other financial numbers for us and, uh, and uh, maintain the overall stability uh, of, uh, of Tickmill. And also some of the uh, strategic focus area we have for, uh, for 2019 so our focus is uh, to expand organically uh, by uh, using our existing uh, channels, uh, how we uh, attract clients and how we serve them. Uh, also, we are going to maintain a uh, quite conservative approach towards expenses and costs because uh, uh, the uh, overall uh, uh, cost pressure in our industry is actually quite big. Uh, and the competitive landscape uh, is also quite uh, difficult. Uh, we are also 
have been looking at various uh, acquisition opportunities. We are uh, very eager to, uh, to do something, is, uh, is to look for acquisition opportunities in terms of the technology. So the technology that, uh, that either helps uh, to facilitate uh, the trading business of our clients uh, in some innovative or new way, or even technologies that help us to run uh, our business, uh, even from the operational side, uh, more effectively and, uh, and efficiently. And uh, an additional focus what we will have this year is, uh, is adding new products uh, and platforms. So today, uh, we are uh, primarily focused on one, uh, one platform, which is uh, the uh, sort of the mainstream uh, platform in the, uh, in the retail ethics trading business. It's MetaTrader 4. Uh, we are looking also into other platforms and, uh, and other instruments uh, to expand our, uh, our business. We uh, want to expand our footprint in terms of the regulations that we have across the globe. So uh, whenever we feel that in, uh, uh, when in certain area we have a bigger client base, we actually want to go local there and we want to uh, acquire a local license. So uh, I believe that uh, uh, through uh, 2019 we will have some news uh, on that uh, front as well. And uh, automation and efficiency, as I already mentioned, uh, uh, our objective always is also to preserve the capital uh, base of the company uh, and uh, to facilitate the uh, existing business and also the uh, high growth that we have uh, in our uh, business uh, today. And, uh, and last but not the least uh, is, uh, is our, uh, our strategic focus uh, to, uh, to position ourselves as a, as a go-to broker uh, for algorithmic traders. Uh, those of you who don't know, uh, then uh, approximately 70-80% of our average monthly trading volume that comes from the clients, it's algorithmic flow, uh, which means that these uh, algorithms are not trading uh, 7 or 8 hours a day, but they are trading 24 hours uh, a day. And, uh, and this is actually the reason also why our volumes uh, have been growing so much. And finally, uh, to, uh, to be a place uh, for people that want to get involved in this industry, want to work in this industry, and, uh, and to be a place where they could actually achieve their, uh, their goals and, and test, uh, test themselves, uh, get into new challenges and, uh, and excel uh, in their career. So uh, that's pretty much it uh, for our uh, first uh, uh, video on our financial results uh, for 2018. It was a, a pleasure to present these figures for you.